Brofist to you all! Another week down, and my god, what a journey we have been on on RPG February, where we have sunk our teeth, and I mean sunk, into Divinity Original Sin 2. My god. RPG for the ages. <laughs> what a journey he has been! Fire Slug reigns supreme! Not really, he's kind of a disaster, this poor fucker. This poor, poor Fire Slug is not getting the job done. Chris, can you change that for us if you're here? Uh, it's not been the journey I was hoping for, <laughs> but it's all good. Praise be to the Fire Slug. Praise be indeed. Hold on, let me fix this because I didn't change it because I'm bad. Oh, Chris is on it. Awesome. All right. I'm, 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 Chris is on it. Thank you, though, everybody who does support the channel. In one way or another, you guys are all amazing. We love you very much. Oh, it feels good. It feels good to play a game for like eight hours straight on stream and just be like, I wish we didn't have to stop. <laughs> I wish we didn't have to stop. I wish life would just go away. I'd like to live in a cave. We did, of course, finish Knights of the Old Republic 2. And everyone's still reeling a little bit from BlizzCon. Mix of disappointment. I'm not in that boat. I'm not in the disappointment boat. I'm quite the opposite. I'm kind of okay with where they are at. For a very, very early preview, I think it was fine. I think their BlizzCon was okay. It was pretty good. Uh, it was, wasn't, was uh, you know, standout. But they haven't got anything much ready. I kind of feel bad for them almost. You know, someone's like, make a presentation on this stuff you've not, like, finished yet. Like, well, <laughs> you know, what, what do you want me to do? Uh, we're many, many months away from the realization of it. So I thought it was okay. I thought for an online thing, I, I thought they did all right. Uh, there was a lot of... A lot of stuff there that they just couldn't go into detail of because they couldn't. It was missing a big hype moment. I honestly think the leak had a big part in that for at least me. Trying to put myself in the perspective of if I didn't know you were going to announce all this stuff, I would have been way more hype. For sure. Like, there's no way. If it, if it was all a surprise when they actually showed that stuff off, it would have been pretty... It would have been considerably better. Uh, but having known everything beforehand... I mean, even Wrath of the Lich King... Let's put it in context, alright? Wrath of the Lich King, the rise of Arthas... We all knew it was going to happen, so... Even the BlizzCon crowd was like, yay! For Wrath of the Lich King. To put it in context... Uh, <laughs> we already knew. Uh, we already knew all the details and stuff like that. So I thought it was okay. <laughs> Either way... We've got some cool stuff that we're looking into uh, for World of Warcraft this week. I'm very excited for what you're going to see on YouTube uh, as we've been playing catch up. Should be good. Should be good. But that's not why you're here today, is it, ladies and gentlemen? No, it's not. No, it is not. So should we give you? A, should we give our wonderful live audience here some uh, say in what we start with here? I have a 13-year-old poisons a guild. Oh God, 13-year-old uh, poisons a guild, mm, which includes a picture of me somehow. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to see what that's about. Uh, the fall of an RP guild. Oh, we, we're killing guilds today, ladies and gentlemen. We're killing guilds. The fall of RP, which is written in... Is this Comic Sans? Did you change it to that, Bex? Or was it originally written in Comic Sans? Because it is written in Comic Sans. The Tyranny of Niceness is the third story that Bex has prepared for us. I am going to have to read potentially read a drama story today uh, written in Comic Sans, which is amazing. They sent it so you would have to suffer. Thank you. Could you please not send drama stories in Comic Sans? I would love that very, very much. And our final story... Of the four that Bex has prepared for us for today is the Uwu Girl. The Uwu, the Uwu Girl. Our 13-year-old Poison. The Tyranny of Niceness. And the Fall of RP. Those are what's on. Why the fuck do I ask you guys? I swear to God. <laughs> I should have scrolled through the titles. I should have scrolled through the titles, shouldn't I? All right. Fine. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Yes, there is no anime coming, but for those of you who, uh, who are out there, we are we are RPG February is definitely carrying on into March because RPGs are huge. But we are moving into Horror May, is our next theme month. We're going to be playing a lot of horror games in May, including the new Resident Evil. Should be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that. Okay, here we go. The Uwu Girl. If I have to do voice acting, Bex, we're reevaluating this situation. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> Alright, names that we have chosen from our wonderful supporters on our website are Foamy Puppy, 
And Sandoval. Sandoval. <sighs> but the chat loves it. You, what is this? What What is this supporting the audience? Never support the audience. They're treacherous and sinister and evil and all things bad. All right, then. Hello, Preacher and your wonderful jury in the court that is Preach Gaming. That would be you guys. Put your wigs on. Greetings from Team Greece. Oh, we're going over to Greece. I started playing World of Warcraft a little before the Shadowlands pre-patch. Whoa, new fish. New boy. Hey, new boy. Boo. Boo the new boy. Well, I've been keeping up with the game since the launch of Battle for Azeroth. <laughs> okay. Primarily, I was interested in the lore of Warcraft since uh, Warcraft 3 was my favorite game when I was a wee little boy. And I was playing Hearthstone since 2.17. You're a Hearthstone main. Who goes from Hearthstone to World of Warcraft? Huh. Weird. You went Warcraft 3, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft. All right. Hey, each to their own. Each to their own. I started watching Drama Time around this time, and I started playing World of Warcraft, and after all the stories of people fucking their guildies over, oh, fucking their guildies' wives, I thought to myself, wow, World of Warcraft must be completely full of degenerates. How dare you? How fucking dare you? That is a disgrace. <laughs> That's not true at all. One of my friends has been playing for years, and I joined his guild, in which he was an officer. Before joining, though, my friend told me, hey, look... Just putting it out there for you guys, all right? This guild you're joining, they want to do some mythic raiding this expansion. This is my Greek accent, by the way. But they can't seem to accept that we're all really bad at this game. <laughs> I didn't care. Since I didn't have a hard-on for raiding, mainly due to the time commitment needed, we currently, as of the month of February, are doing Phase 2 of Heroic Denathrius. Is this Bellula's guild? I'm joking, all right? Bell's killed it. Thumbs up. Having set foot into... Uh, having set foot once into Mythic, wiping at Shriekwing for three hours. Oh my god, kill me. Imagine doing Shriekwing for three hours. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but this is not what the story is about. Shriekwing for three hours. Yo. <laughs> That's an oof. Oh, no. Uh, I, I'm busy. I need to go. On my guild's Discord server, there are many people who do not play World of Warcraft, but still play other games as a community. I partake in those activities. Since I've made a couple of friends in the guild and they're fun to play with. There is this one girl, though. Foamy Puppy. And she is... And the only way I could describe this... A fucking weeb. She has an anime character as her avatar... And she posts GIFs. And when she posts GIFs in the Discord, she only posts GIFs of that one particular character. I played a couple of times with Foamy Puppy, along with other people on the server. And we've played games like Among Us and Phasmophobia. But I never really talked to her, apart from taking jabs at her in the general chat in Discord when she wrote anything weeb-like, weeb like Uwu. I have a question. I am not taking the piss. What is Uwu? What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Is it like, yes? Is it like, hands up? I'm not Googling it. No, I don't want that. It's a face. A face. Okay. Let's go forward a couple of months. I get a Discord friend invite from none other than the foamy puppy herself. There are two things you should know about her. One, she was engaged with another guy from the server called Sandoval. And two, she had an OnlyFans account. To which, from what I can tell, the entire Discord server is subscribed to, except for me. <clears throat> well, okay then. So naturally, when she added me, I thought she wanted to promote her OnlyFans to me. And she did do that. When I told her I wasn't interested in subscribing to her OnlyFans, she told me that I am missing out and sent me a picture she posted there. I replied saying that I can't see that I'm missing out. Oh no. 
That's fire. I replied saying, I can see that I'm missing out. <laughs> I am missing out, but I can live without it. And thanks very much for the offer. From there on, we changed the subject and started having a normal conversation. After a couple of days of chit chat, I noticed that Foamy Puppy was flirting with me. At that point, I thought she was still trying to obviously get me to sub to her OnlyFans in a roundabout flirtatious way. I had made it clear to her that I wasn't going to do that, but I played along with the flirting because it was fun. Uh, after a while, she started sending me nudes again, <laughs> more explicit than the first ones. This kept going for a couple of weeks. She would be at work, take a bathroom break to take pictures, send them to me, or she would be at home with Sandoval watching TV as she told me she would be sending me some more nudes that were on her OnlyFans. I brought up Sandoval a couple of times in our conversations. I didn't want to mess anything up between them, and she told me he's cool. And he enjoys others seeing her pictures and stuff like that. So I assumed, you know, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Now, it's not really obvious from the story so far, but I have one rule when it comes to things like that. I never go near cook <laughs> <laughs> Look at this chat. <laughs> cook alert. Take the Captain, I recommend we move to cook alert. <laughs> Jesus Christ, cook alert. Oh. Now, it's not really obvious from the story so far, but I have a rule that I won't approach girls who are married or engaged. That doesn't mean that I don't go along if they approach me for, you know, a flirtatious chat. So this was going on for a while. We're texting, she was sending me pictures, saying she would fly to Greece from America for vacation, and the things that she was going to do to me, etc, etc, the usual stuff. But then it gets serious. One day, I'm in Other Side 12, with the boys from the guild. They started talking about Foamy Puppy. And more specifically, of course, as you can imagine, her OnlyFans account. As you can imagine, they were all subbed. And they were going on about how great it was. I stood silent during that conversation, said nothing. One of the guys asked me if I was subbed to it, and I replied with a, no. Not wanting to go further into it. He then said that, bruh, 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 you're missing out. You're missing out. And you get to talk to her on Discord. It's amazing. He was going to pass the pictures on to me on Discord. <laughs> Please don't, I said. That was his business, because uh, that was his business, and it wasn't cool of him to be spreading uh, those things for free while she was trying to make money out of it. He called me a pussy and sent the pictures anyway. Now, I'm not going to lie, I had a quick look at the pictures to check. It turns out the spiciest picture of her was well shit compared to some of the stuff I'd got. And that's when I realized my boys, my bros, they're a bunch of fucking losers. <laughs> That's what you got out of this? Man, you guys are losers. You're paying for this? Really? <laughs> but I said nothing once again. Because <laughs> I was raised right. <laughs> I'm raised right. A couple of days ago, I got a message from Foamy Puppy's fiance, Sandoval. Which surprised me because she had assured me he was aware of what was going on and was cool with it. After all, it's no secret about the account. The message read as follows, though. What in the actual fuck are you doing with my fiancé? I thought about my response for quite some time. And then I sent the reply, which I thought was most appropriate. Three question marks. Sandoval then proceeded sending me messages saying that I was trying to ruin their relationship and wanted to take her away from him. I didn't reply. Instead, I just sent her a message. What's going on? And asking if she'd lied to me about Sandoval being cool with the pictures and things. She replied that she technically said he was good with the OnlyFans. And the stuff she'd been sending me was worse than OnlyFans. Hell of a fine line. How do you reckon you go about dating a porn star? Side note. I mean, they do. Get <laughs> you know? I don't know about that. Like, Emma's out right now. <laughs> if I, I, I'm not sure I'd be comfortable sitting here thinking, ah, she's out fucking some guys and she'll be home later. <laughs> it's all good. Shortly after I received a message from the Guild GM Discord server admin. You gotta lean into it. 
<laughs> you gotta lean into it. Embrace it. <laughs> you just gotta roll with it, man. You just gotta go. Be free. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after I received a message from the Guild GM Discord server admin, he would kick me from the Discord server to appease Sandoval. And I was to make another Discord account and join again. Just so he would shut the fuck up. Word got out all this time she was sending me some good stuff. Better stuff than they had been paying for. So my boys in the guild did what any anything you were uh, anyone would expect them to do. Share? Share or what? Share, dude! Now remember, I'm raised right. I'm raised proper and true. So I'm not going to share. My initial thoughts were correct though. This game, World of Warcraft, is indeed full of degenerates. And apparently now, I am one of them. And I've only been playing this expansion. <laughs> am I guilty of becoming a WoW degenerate? What does chat believe? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> <Me. laughs> you you're still taking a peek though, right? But at the same time, it's public knowledge. It's like reading a book at the library, honestly. It's just the library with tits in it. So I don't think it's degenerate. Is going to the library degenerate? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's what you're saying. I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think it's all good. <laughs> oh, dude plays Hearthstone? Definitely degenerate. How much money has he spent on Hearthstone? That's the real question. How much money has he spent on Hearthstone? Do you guys ever check that shit? Personally, I have never spent a penny. I've played quite a bit of it, but I've never spent a penny. I didn't enjoy it that much. Ghoul's Gold is a quality name. And Xenodan. All right. League? Yeah, League is bad. I think at one point, Andy was on like, what, 1,500 quid or something crazy? He's still no Rich Campbell, though. You got to work on those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. I wonder what Rich has spent on Genshin Impact at this point. <sighs> Whew. <clears throat> 30k it's got to be something crazy like that 10k plus yeah he's uh he's a bit of a whale is rich it's a bit scary because you try and talk him down <laughs> you try and bring him down like you don't need to do it rich and then he comes back in he's like yeah i totally did it all right <clears throat> okay <sighs> i do love some 13 year old poison <clears throat> greetings mr lamb hello and salute to your you know your chat okay <laughs> bit rude i am writing this from the land defined by its proper good-looking women and high amount of covid cases team swee this is a story about when i started playing the game in wad yeah kind of rude actually you guys you see world of warcraft has been a part of my entire family for a long time same my cousins are way older than me so they've been playing the game all the way since back in nilla they had a guild together and the oldest brother xenodan was the guild master but by the time vanilla came out I had just about managed to stand for the first time in my life. So obviously, I wasn't allowed to play. Let's go to 2014 then. I am now old enough to play World of Warcraft. Warlords of Draenor was about to be launched and Blizzard ran the WOD cinematic as ads on the YouTube. Now you may say whatever about that expansion as a whole, but those cinematics... Tight. They intrigued me. My friends since birth, Ghoul's Gold, and three, three other friends from school decided that we were going to get World of Warcraft and play together. I can't remember the WOD ads. Which one were the WOD ads? I genuinely can't remember what the ads were for WOD. <laughs> Was that with the Mr. T ones? Hmm? Don't be guilty because he's a WOD baby. Everyone started sometimes. We will no longer be slaves. Uh, Mr. T was Wrath. Was it the one where the, uh, the, the I forget the, the name, the spinning bombs that the orcs use were flying around. Gul'dan offering the blood. I'll have to check that later. I can't remember what they were. Anyway, so a couple of months later, we had gotten the game, or at least money for it, and we were going to start our journey together. Yeah, the iron, iron thingies. Yeah, yeah, the iron stars. 
And it did not go that smoothly at all. We were terrible. One of the friends who was supposed to be our healer decided that healing was gay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and also that the game, his brother had told him that the game was total garbage. Which me and Ghoul's Gold were of the assumptions before as well, as we were total uh, superior gamers as we had history with League of Legends. We had been League of Legends gamers since nine years old. I bet you were. And I bet you were a joy to play with as well. Nine-year-old League of Legends gamers. I mean, that's poison, right? But at least we were willing to give World of Warcraft a chance. <laughs> so we decided to continue without him. We all downloaded the game and rolled Horde on the same server as my cousins. I played a Blelf Warlock, a Ghoul's Gold, the Blelf Priest, to have the flexibility of healing and going deeps now that our designated healer had given up on the dream. We reached level 15 and hit a problem. You see, one of the other friends from school who had chosen to play a troll warrior started out in Kalimdor, and the rest of us were, of course, in the Blelf starting zone. Because we wanted to play together, we decided we would do our starting zones and then rendezvous at a place to start leveling together. But this did not work out so well. After we had completed the Eversong Woods, we made our way to Orgrimmar to meet up with our warrior friend, only to not be able to find him. Dumbasses. Fucking kids, man. I fucking hate kids. As you've no doubt figured out, we noticed he'd gone on the wrong realm. He had, in his mind, he'd invested so much into that troll warrior that there was no fucking way he was going to re-roll and quit the game on the spot. <coughs> that level 15 dream. It's a journey. I've invested so much time in there. No matter! Two down! It's all good! Me and Ghoul's Gold, though, we got this, yeah? <sighs> me ghoul's gold, ghoul's gold and our last friend thought and continued leveling but the problems aren't yet over we hit level 20 new problem our third friend had paid for his wow battle chest and a three month sub but then he was greeted with a lovely screen that said something along the lines of your trial has ended purchase the game to level to level 90 and defeat cool bosses or some shit like that Instead of writing a ticket or anything, he decided that Blizzard were a bunch of scammers and that the game was trash anyways as it gave him this screen. And he quit on the spot. Yeah. This is rough, man. This is rough. Imagine actually putting in your game code key. Imagine figuring that out. So much brain power needed. Now, this is a bit of a newbie story, but me and Ghoul's Gold weren't noobs. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sure, I did some newbie shit, like watching your Demonology Warlock guide. Hey. You remember when I AOE'd that entire platform? That was for you, buddy. Yeah? That was for you, buddy. Remember? Twice as much damage as anyone else in the raid group. <sighs> Can we all just give a moment to salute Warlords of Draenor Demonology? <laughs> the times... <laughs> Room wide immolation aura. <sighs> so good. <clears throat> I watched your. It's okay, anyway. Some newbie shit like watching your demonology warlock guide to learn how to play a level 20 warlock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. I was trying desperately to optimize my gear during leveling. As I previously stated, me and Ghoul's Gold had been trying had been playing League of Legends for around four years. We were seasoned gamers. So we could never even comprehend that some people were using their mouse to click abilities. And only got to know that people actually do that because of this show. We researched what specs were the best. Oh, filthy min maxer slaves. Which talents to use, what add-ons to install. We even had damage meters before being able to use mounts in this game. So when we hit the cap, we had already researched what to do to get up to snuff. Dungeons, garrison, and never forget those sweet, sweet Apexis juicy crystals. But by the time we had reached 100, HFC was about to be released. And with it, the ever so present catch-up gear. Instead of grinding, we started leveling alts. Patiently waiting for our sweet catch-up gear to arrive. Oh, uh, you fell into the newbie trap. 
By this time, I had gotten in contact with Zenodin about joining his guild and raiding with them one day. They were a heroic raiding guild, who had dabbled with some mythic in the previous tier. I don't know if he felt obligated to do it since I'm family or what, but somehow me and Ghoul's Gold made it into the guild. After a few weeks of farming up some gear to meet the eye level requirements, we were allowed to join the normal farm raid. I wish I could tell you it went well. I wish I could tell you that that League of Legends training came in clutch. I was dead last on the meters, just above the tanks. And Ghoul's Gold was last on the healing meters. But of course, this must be purely because of item level. Their item level was so much higher. They had tier sets from BRF and better trinkets. But we felt that we were playing well. I felt like it can't be a skill thing. We weren't dying to mechanics. It's got to be gear. And so we were allowed to stay. We got to run farm raids over a couple of weeks, during which me and Ghoul's Gold figure out how to start simming our characters, looking at logs, and we watched tons of class and raid guides on YouTube. Although we'd never uh, never read any written guides, because reading is for fucking nerds, right? <laughs> it says here in brackets, yeah, I know, two 13-year-olds simming their characters and saying that reading is nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, chat, if 13-year-old me could sim my character in Wall of the Draenor, you could do it too. It's really not hard. <laughs> you guys got told, man. You guys got told if a 13-year-old could do it all the way back then, what's your excuse? What's your reasoning, eh? Get fucked. <laughs> Thanks to this and the gear we were starting to get. Started to climb those fucking meters, y'all. People started to take notice. I started to get comments like, Pretty good for a kid. Good DPS for a dog toy, you squeaky voiced prick. That's some good bants. I should note here, our voices were very, very squeaky. No, we did not take offense to this. It's all good fun. This is gamer talk. <laughs> After a few more weeks of improvement, Zenodan finally spoke to us if we were feeling up to some... Something a little higher. Something a little tougher. Heroic raiding. Oh, yeah. Ghoul's goals said. But I was nervous. Normal's one thing. Chilling, relaxing. Hard to go wrong. But heroic? That's big boy territory. Then it convinced me that it's not that hard, honestly. It's basically just normal. And that they wouldn't be too hard on us since, you know, we're kids after all. Why is this the picture? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is that the picture? <laughs> like I'm your old man waking you up. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like being like daddy's watching. <sighs> Raid night came, an old boy. Did he not have to be mad at neither me nor Ghoul's Gold for performing poorly? Because he was so preoccupied by doing just that with his core raiders. My other cousins included. I remember they had progressed up to Manoroth by this point. But every reclear we would have about 6-7 to seven wipes on Iskar. Due to people not knowing what to do with the orb. Jesus Christ. Iskar flashbacks. <clears throat> And for anybody wondering, yes, everybody had the Iskar Assist add-on as well. What was worse? I need some old schoolers. I need my old boys with me. What's worse, Iskar or Lady Vash? TBC Classic's coming. You know that Lady Vash shit's gonna come back and haunt you. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. The fucking I swear to God on Lady Vash, we watched a guy stand with the core screaming at him and it was a guy who always talked in comms like there was no way he wasn't listening and he didn't do it and then he died and we were screaming at him just throw the fucking core just throw it like and we i think we had a druid stood next to it and he's saying pass it to me to me he's like reading his name he's like pass it to me my name is Nalkill. throw it to the druid and he didn't do it and died and then he went i couldn't find it in my bags <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Anyway, I promised you a tale about how I killed the guild, not how I joined a guild, and so onwards we must proceed. You see, Xenodan, my cousin, raid leader, guild master, was also playing a warlock at the same time, which I was too. He'd always taken pride in being really good at the game, doing the big boy deeps, usually at the top whilst also raid leading. However, as I gained more and more gear, I was slowly creeping up towards him on those meters. Of course, at first, this was a positive thing for him. Made a good choice, brought in more DPS. More DPS equals easier kills, better all around. But as I kept getting closer and closer to him on the logs, the mocking began from his fellow friends. All right, Zenon and mate, did you invite your 13-year-old to carry you? You noticed that that 13-year-old boy is, like, outplaying you, mate. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Did you see that that, like, squeaky rubber ducky is doing more damage than you? <sighs> we also made this poster to go along with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredibly zoomed in. I like it. I like it. I like it. That is my, like, not impressed face, though. <laughs> That is my very not impressed face. <clears throat> and then the day came. You see, me and Zenodan are now sitting on top of the DPS meters, pretty evenly. Some fights I'm above him, and some he's above me. He's playing an Affliction Lock, which is the go-to spec for HFC at the time. But in some fights, Destro was superior. I had researched this. So me trying to squeeze the most out of my character, started practicing Destro on the side. Practicing Destruction. Pick one. So when I whipped it out on Heroic Night and beat my cousin Xenodan by 18% on the meters on Iskar, team speak went wild. They were trash-talking him so fucking much because they didn't give a shit about it if there were better people in the raid, but they knew Xenodan really, really wanted to be the best. However, in his credit, he played it cool. Kept his shit together and declared as all good players should, that he only lost because destruction is broken on Iskar. And that when it comes to the real difficult spec, Affliction, we're even Stevens. Okay? So now you know. I would have picked lag. <laughs> Just reach into the heart of excuses. Lag. <laughs> However, the real memeing started after the raid when the logs were published. You see, Xenodan's item level was 15 higher than mine. And if you look at the item level percentage on the logs, he is, unfortunately, 75 to 80th percentile for his item level. Whereas me, with my hairless balls, are 90 plus. Looking back at the logs, I could see why. He didn't pre-pot. He was using the wrong type of stat food. He wasn't stacking cooldowns to their fullest. This sent waves of new memes and flame around the guild chat by the lines of Are we just going to replace you now then, Xenodan? Or are you going to re-roll? <clears throat> the next generation is already taking over, huh? Maybe you're too boomer for this game, Xenodan, you know? You're too old. Now, I want to make it really clear. I wasn't memeing him. It was his friends. I was shy. I usually didn't use my mic during the raid at all because of Hey no, hey my warlock and such things like that. I mostly only played and talked with Ghoul's Gold outside of the raids. The day after I log on because guess what? Apex is daily time. Spank it to that jungle. Here we go. And I see that I have no guild message appearing. Oh, not your cousin. I think I've gotten kicked because Zenadan got mad at me. So I sent a message to Ghoul's Gold to log in and see if he was still in the guild. And he's not. We came to the conclusion that either he also got kicked because he was my friend, or that the healers were also mad that he was becoming one of our best healers. Later, I saw another one of my cousins log into Battle.net, so I asked him why we were kicked. He told me, look, technically, you weren't kicked. We destroyed the whole guild. He went on to explain that Xenodan had gotten so fed up with being mocked that he had gone to the kitchen, punched a hole in his pantry door, 
Now, I don't know why he went to his kitchen and started punching shit and not in his bedroom or, you know, just not punching anything at all. And after calming down for a bit, he went back to his computer, took everything from the guild bank and hit that G to span button right then and there. By this time, me and Ghoul's Gold were not online because we were only allowed to stay up till 10 o'clock. <laughs> Raids were 19.30 till 10 p.m. with a 20 minute break. To be honest, the guild has been on a downwards trend for a while, according to my other cousin, but this was the straw that had broken the camel's back. Zenidan's ego would never recover, and he said that he didn't want to play World of Warcraft, which of, which he, of course, never was going to be any better. And it's easy to look good when you only play with bad people. Now, me and Ghoul's Gold, I'd like to say I gave a fuck about my cousin, you know, family guild, but I really didn't. They weren't very good. And we would already be talking about maybe going to Mythic, and this guild was not going to do that. Me and Ghoul's Gold searched for a few weeks before finding a guild that would raid the big boys, and pugging Heroic to get gear while searching. Good luck to anyone that is 13 and trying to get into a Mythic guild, lol. <laughs> I would never accept you today if I were a GM. But since we had the logs to prove that we were in fact not shit, we finally got into one, and thanks to the tier lasting for so goddamn long, we were able to get Cutting Edge in our first raid tier. And that is how a stubborn, prideful raid leader, guild master, and some little kids killed a guild that was there for almost nine years. I have met up with my cousin Zenidan since, and there were no hard feelings between us, but he's not, not touched World of Warcraft since that day, except for logging in and mailing all the gold and other concepts from the guild bank over to me, like a real bro. My other cousins did the same because it wasn't the same for them without the guild. Me and Ghoul's Gold, though, we continue raiding Mythic in Legion, but we quit after Argus fell and have not played the horrific-looking look battle for Azeroth. But we are thinking about coming back for some Shadowlands. Thank you, Preacher, for your content. I have continued to watch, even though I do not play World of Warcraft anymore. And I'm sorry for the poor English. It is not my native language. Thank you, Team Swee. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much for that. I'm going to have to read some comic terms. It was payment for all the carries. You've got to watch out for these young kids. These young kids are actually just nightmare fuel when it comes to gaming. I can already see it in mine. I really can. They're strategizing and shit. They might only be playing games like Bloons. TD6. But I'm seeing them actually learn strategies and positioning. It's kind of scary to watch, honestly. It's a little bit on the spooky side. <clears throat> That's the shit, I guess. I guess. As long as they keep up. I don't mind as long as they keep up with their outdoor activities, which is what they're doing today. They're out doing outdoor stuff. They are evolving. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. The fall of RP. <clears throat> uh, message from Bex. There are very minor characters with four or less mentions, so I've given them the names Nups, Fingal, and Bex. This story has been written in Comic Sans, and I thought it was funny. Bex. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Zalius. I guess you are. Okay. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Holla, ballers! He spelt it Halla. H A L L A. Halla, ballers! And hello from the Madland that is. Team USA! I am a boy of 17 years old. And this story only ended recently. And it began two years ago. I noticed that you were okay with a couple of FFXIV stories. Especially if they have RP. So here's one about the RP guild, which nearly came to a complete end because of simply one person popping. Some background about our little group. We used to be a World of Warcraft roleplay guild on the server of that moon guard, but we left because of all the drama. We wanted a fresh start, a fresh world to play in. So we made a new guild or a free company as it's called. In FFXIV. 
Uh, for a while, it was all fine. Exciting, even. Brand new star, adventures to be had, new characters to play as. The only notable event being some fuckery that's worthy of a separate story. I have written it, so it'll be on its way. With the only noteworthy event being the joining of Poppin. Poppin joined us, and her roleplay story was that of a cat girl black mage. Of course it is. Which is like a warlock. But they use fire and ice elements instead. Now, this would later become an alt. Now, Poppin and my character quickly became friends. And even out of character, we became friends there too. In addition, quickly after her joining, she and Hawkins became an in-character couple. It was an interesting thing. However, it became a problem. Later on, she and Hawkins broke up. After my character's dad died because Poppin got pissed at my character and Hawkins liked my character. <laughs> After this turn of events, Hawkins excluded Poppin from many of our casual RP events, which greatly pissed her off. She went to leadership, started criticizing what the hell was going on in this guild. Yes. It was deserved because of Hawkins, but it was a dick move. Eventually, Poppin left us and quit the guild. Me and her, though, kept in contact. And on the eve of the Shadowbringers patch 5.2, I went to her in-character wedding as I was invited as a guest. However, the funny thing is that person has no importance to this story, the groom. That person who Poppin married quit the game immediately after. And I learned this because Poppin's cat girl came and collapsed in my character's apartment and almost died. In character. In the meantime, Poppin rolled a brand new, fresh character to go along with. And what would she choose, ladies and gentlemen, but nothing other than a Viera bunny girl. I managed to get back into our guild as a new character. It also helped that Hawkins had left our guild a few months earlier. Now, this was around the time COVID-19 was getting pretty serious and the pandemic was underway. This is where Nups comes in. She was the girlfriend of the bunny girl. Meanwhile, later on, my character got together with her cat girl, which meant that in character, Poppins got two people on the go. Now, wouldn't you know it, Nupsy is addicted to changing races. And I shit you not, she changes race at least once a month. Hell, she even got me to change from Lalafell. <clears throat> I'll include pictures at the end to show of the, at the end of this shit show. Nups quickly became an officer, and a good one at that. She can be described as a crackhead. <laughs> what? This is so bizarre. <laughs> Nups could be described as a crackhead. Now, I don't know where this is going. In brackets, it says, No, I do not know if she does drugs, but early on, she described herself as uh, as such quite often. I think she thought crackhead meant being a little crazy. <clears throat> Nups was also pregnant, both in character and IRL. However, this is also where the big portion of our story begins. Poppin quickly proved her ability to dig her heels into the core of the fucking earth. And I shit you not. Poppin started so many arguments, including one over the lore of an in-character robotic heart having a Dark Knight crystal in it. Very important. This happened more than once, and it happened even more and more over really stupid things that she didn't like about people's stories. I'm not joking. I had to put my guild chat in another window because of how bad she would complain. In addition to this, she openly hated the current campaign our guildmaster was running. One time, she literally had her character turn on the party because they didn't explain anything to her, which is a really asshole move in RP, but not a smart one. It led to her whole party being split. She ruined many RP events that I was a part of, despite us RPing weekly with my character and her cat girl, mostly staying out of the drama, and being used as a way to cool us both down. Once the current campaign ended, a new one began. During the second event of this campaign, Poppin got interested and came uh, and came because the 
the DM, the Dungeon Master, included a tie-in with her story so he could make her happy. She tried very fucking hard to split everyone up. It caused frictions in the group, pissed a lot of people off with time wasted. Eventually, the GM caved in and decided to do things her way so that we could have a smoother time. They made the facility was to be revealed where Poppin's character was experimented on so her heart could be implanted and so on and so forth with Poppin-centric stories. At the end of this event, once again, Poppin got bored and turned on the whole team. And it pissed everyone off as they had done so much to make her happy. It even pushed... It even pushed against her for Big Tuna. As well as her pushiness, pushing Big Tuna out of the event. Another good friend. And making her so angry as to consider deleting all of her characters. Now Fingal was here too. Fingal during the event was whispering, wondering, Why the fuck are we even doing all this? I don't get it. And all I had to tell Finn was I have no fucking clue. I really didn't understand why all this was happening. Poppin later revealed she was flipping a coin to determine how her character would behave to keep things interesting. This put Poppin on the chopping block. The officer corps was going to give her one final chance before they just outright kicked her. But this was going to be wasted. The RPs are probably cringing to hell right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> this was wasted. She decided her character was now knocked out and could no longer play. To which Poppy decided she had to roll a brand new character. And this character's RP story, in her words, was a literal bitch. Genius. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> it's out of character. Hey, 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 hey. Look, it's out of character for your character to be acting like a bitch. Uh huh. Is that right? Okay, watch this then. Oh, my character's dead. Here's my new character. Her story is, she's a bitch. Outplay that one, nerds. Gotcha. For two nights, me and Big Tuna started RPing, and Poppin would join in on her brand new bitchy character. Both nights, Poppin's character went on mad rants about how Big Tuna shouldn't even be in the guild because she's a pacifist loser. In addition, she ranted constantly about another girl because the girl was drunk one night and her character's introduction to Poppin was her asking her not to sit next to her or she might hurt her with her drunken party. The second night, I was fucking done. I was so fucking done. But it took me a couple of minutes to consider how I should respond to this. What I did was dramatic. Poppin whispered me on Discord angrily. Complaining as per usual. To which I sent her the following. Oh, I've got a screenshot? Oh my god. Okay, I've got a screenshot of the RP rage. Oh my sweet Jesus. Are you ready? Okay. <clears throat> you know what, Poppin? Okay. <clears throat> I have proof. You know what, Poppin? I'm pissed at you two. You've pissed me off so much. You cause endless fucking drama. You've derailed events. You almost made Big Tuna delete her fucking characters. You've made people quit events, and you have refused to listen to literally anything. The only word you know is fucking stop, and I'm done. I am not going to tolerate it anymore, all caps. Consider this the end. Consider our characters broken up in character right now. I am putting you and all of your characters on ignore. I am done with you. Stay in this guild if you fucking want to. I don't care. But I will not tolerate you anymore. If you ever change, DM someone and have her talk to me. Other than that, get better. Fucking seriously. With your shit RP. <sighs> Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. With that, I stuck to my word. I put Poppin's character on ignore. And you know what I did then? Started dating Big Tuna. That's right. It wouldn't last long. The officers didn't want drama. That night, Poppin and all her characters were removed from the guild. Later on, I would unignore her. 
Her cat girl had my character kill her later on. <laughs> which didn't sit well, but it was really the best way to end our in-character stories. Which up until this point had gone unfinished. And that's a great crime. Poppin went on to join a guild whose GM I'm friends with and has been doing fine ever since. Poppin has since realised her error and even had a full-on breakdown the night she was kicked with Fingal, having to play the role of therapist. Overall, it was a rough time, but we're going to get better. I want you to share in what my character is and understand the relationship we had. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. What is this? This is a little girl, right? I mean, I know there's ears, but this is a little girl. Okay. That's a Lalafell. That's a Lalafell. All right. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> a little bit. I can't. That's all I see there is a little girl. That's all I see. I see nothing else other than a little girl. That's all I have. I see nothing more and nothing less. <laughs> That's literally all I see. It's too much for me. I'm too boomer for it, man. I'm not going down the road. No matter how many people tell me it's good stuff. Uh, okay, that's 10 pages. That's a long one. Whoosh. Is there a little one at the end here, Bex? Or? Do, 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 do. Are we going in? I think we are. What's this one? Oh, okay. So there's a lot of names. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Bex, for providing this. Let's have a look. Gone with the Wind Fury. Gone with the Wind Fury. Very poetic. Remember when we thought Wind Fury was going to be the big one again? All right, we've got Bold One. Welcome aboard. Snow Pants. Sneaky Fox. Felix. Shelter. The Melter. And Adri. Yeah, Wind Fury still sad to this day. Still sad to this day. Gone with the Wind Fury. The bald one. <laughs> That's not me. Shut up. Right, audience, we need a guild name. And we need a Mythic Plus team name. Oh, why? A Mythic Plus team name. Not like that for a while. Bats Brigade. Ah, the Fire Slugs. Oh, it's got to be the Fire Slugs. Yeah, for sure. Better than OnlyFans. Okay, I like that as an M Plus team. Better than OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, I really like that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Preacher, I come to you today with a gift. A gift for you and a gift for the gentleman in the audience. I ask that you please lower your gavels and shelve your powdered wigs, for this is no tale of judgment, at least for me. There will be no bargaining from me on this one, your author, for kindness or retribution. This is more or less a tableau, a collection of scenes that tell a story of five members of my guild who flew too close to the sun. I'm intrigued. But first, some context. I am comparatively newer to the world of Warcraft. I started in late 7.3 and not understanding how to play the game at all. One fond memory was when I queued for Elephar Argus as a blood death knight because I thought tank specs were just DPS specs that were harder to kill. Kind of were. Fast forward to my first WoW expansion launch then, the battle for Azeroth. And I hated it. I hated it so much. I played Enhancement Shaman at launch because I didn't know any better. In a bottom of the barrel casual heroic guild. To mask my abysmal DPS, I started tanking on my paladin come 8.1 to fill the missing spot in our raid squadron. From this point on, I started to improve steadily at the game. We're products of our environment, so unfortunately my sights were set higher than the husband and wife guild my 18-year-old self had naively joined. By 8.2, some friends and I started our, ho our own ahead of the curve guild, which made the flip to mythic towards the end of the tier. With at least 6 out of 12 Mythic being our goal for Nihilotha come 8.3, which we achieved before the guild disbanded. 
I played balance in 8.3, and unlike several patches prior, my DPS was not below the tanks anymore. Funny enough, I pugged Heroic Nihilotha the day the raid released and received a pair of 460 pants from Mort with the tier 3 infinite stars. <laughs> oh no. Which, so early in the tier, made me god <laughs> for at least a few weeks. But as the expansion wound down, so did my desire to help lead manage a guild through constant roster issues. So my close friends from that guild joined me in transferring to a better server. So we could raid in a guild that was 10 out of 12 mythic. This guild, the Fire Slugs, was solid in Nihilotha. Losing our raid leader in Lazoth and actually announcing the end of the guild. Only for the 15 of us still interested in raiding to inspire our guild master to reform the raid group with some newer players and old friends in order to drop the one-eyed monster. Which we managed in 168 pulls. Which was after all the nerfs, but still a point of pride for us. That's not bad. I even swapped my Moonkin out for a Fire Mage. For, for FOTM. Which enabled me to have the absolute most fun at the end of Battle for Azeroth. This is when my progression as a WoW player took its final form. And I ascended. I had gone from absolute casual bottom DPS. And I had become Raid Leader. My job was a simple three-step process now. First, I get absolutely baked on a daily basis, which not only helps me stay focused, but makes it harder for assholes to piss me off so easily. <laughs> Good science there. Second, there can only be <laughs> there can be only one top DPS. And if that isn't me, there's gonna be hell to pay. I'm back on the boomy this expansion though. Praise be to Tettles. So it's not like that's difficult. And finally, I only play as much as I want to. That means that if Monday rolls around and I've only completed four keys and my filled raid slots for the Great Vault, then I turn to our Lord and Savior, Jesus H. Christ, for a chance at a 226 quantum device or a mythic Zymox ring. Otherwise, I'm putting crucifixion back on the table. <laughs> Why do you want a quantum device? Why? Jesus Christ. Why? Why do you want that thing? Boo! So even though we're at the point in the patch where everybody's feeling burnt out, I always find a way to enjoy myself. I raid three nights a week, take a day or two to do keys and fuck around in alts, and then I'm done. I do not farm them all. I refuse to do PvP past a certain point, and I barely do keys or raid outside of guild groups. Yet, I'm still in a pretty good place gear performance-wise. Pretty sweet gig. The Shadowlands launch was absurdly fun for me and the Fire Slugs. We did so much content together on so many different characters that before the raid came out, and when the day finally came, it was game over for Sire and Athreus. At least it could have been if we managed to reach him week one, but that privilege was reserved for week two. So here we are. Mythic progress is in full swing. We tried to optimize our time on off-raid nights by spamming big keys. I'm one of those people who will group up with just about anyone. But I draw the line. Is this Fingal's story? But I draw the line at people who unironically ask... For help to get 14 keys for their weekly rewards. If I, a 222 balance druid, can sit in LFG and get declined for hours on end because there's someone better queuing for the same key just to complete something for my weekly, then you can too, asshole. No. 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 Work together. Right? <laughs> just work together it's not about everybody having a miserable time that's not what we're doing here because you had a miserable time doesn't mean that they have to have a miserable time no we make it better we raise it that is the purpose better for everybody but those first few weeks were fun I would do keys all day every day with the people in guild, but mostly with just one tank, the bald one. The bald one is so fucking good at World of Warcraft, it's not even funny. Not only does she know everything about whatever class she plays, but she handles pressure better than anyone else I've played with. She played prop paladin at launch, but wasn't a fan of how squishy it felt in certain situations. So she ditched that decently geared character for a blood DK instead. Didn't go vengeance. What a noob. We helped gear this character for her to raid on, but she grew to dislike how little damage her DK could do in keys. So she started gearing her guardian druid. Pfft. 
But this wasn't enough. And then three decently good characters were benched, only for her to finally decide on the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Which, of course, everyone told her to play at launch. Mm. This week, she, the week she capped this character. I personally did over 20 keys with her on my druid, just so she could start doing harder content and eventually bring her DH to Mythic. But the bald one, the bald one was in a unique position, my friends. Being the only tank in our guild who would run keys with other guildies, which is absurd to me. Our other tank has his own little friends group. They like to push. He has, and I'm not joking, literally never run a single key with another member of our guild throughout the entirety of the Shadowlands so far. Now that alone is a problem, where one person, bald one, becomes the only in-house option for a tank in any content we wanted to do, and it created a lot of pressure for the bald one. About a week and a half after I helped the bald one gear her demon hunter, I noticed a sudden lack of invites to guild mythic plus groups. I actually went an entire week only doing one key and didn't even notice before reset. And this issue continued for a few weeks after. I would log on, see that either the bald one is already in a group and everyone else is pugging, try to pug myself, fail or eventually fail, then log off. And this situation wasn't unique to me, I might add. When I checked Raider.io, oh god, <laughs> when I checked Raider.io in games to see if anyone in the guild had been doing keys that week, I'd see countless higher keys done for the week and foolishly assume that there was no issue. That I was basically going nuts and I just missed the boat. But then the conversation started, my friends. Mostly about the disappointing lack of keys being done in the guild. That's odd, I thought. I checked, people have been doing keys all week, right? And that's when I pulled my head out of my ass and smelled the fucking rosebuds. The bald one, who, like me, used to do keys with just about anyone who asked, had found a team. Had grown very fond of one of, and objectively, our best healer, Snowpants. And they discovered they liked doing content together, which is nice. It's good to find someone you synergize really well with. However, it came to be that bald one would only do keys if Snowpants was online, and vice versa. So no other healers were good enough to join in, apparently. This mentality was present in their DPS selection as well. Their three DPSs were always now Sneaky Fox, an Affliction Warlock who happens to be the Guildmaster, Shelter Melter, a Fire Mage, and Felix, a Balance Druid, being the only DPS in those groups. They had made their own... Is this my guild? Is this is this sounding scarily familiar? Okay. With their team formed, no one else in the guild at all was getting Mythic Plus done. Now, before I go into what the actual drama, let me make a few things clear. One, a clique is just a group of friends who like to spend time together. Everyone pays the same price to play the game, so it's unfair to assume that one is entitled to play with certain people or that others have to help them. Second... Being in a guild makes a situation like this tricky. On one hand, a guild is supposed to function as a team. Everyone contributes in order to improve together. But succeeding as a group requires a reasonable degree of personal responsibility. So no, I don't think that the guild's one tank should have to help everybody run 10 keys for the week. But it would probably be in the guild's best interest to be aware that people aren't getting any keys done now anymore. Thirdly, a number of us tried gearing tank characters so we could get more guild groups going, but this proved fruitless. Aren't you a druid? What do you mean? What? Can you say you play balance? Am I wrong? Our man's a druid, right? Pretty sure. <laughs> no one really wanted to bother gearing a new character specifically for Mythic Plus. Which, in its current form, is a wildly unrewarding source of gear. True that, true that. Tensions quickly rose as five people were complete upwards of 20 or more keys a week. And the rest of the guild couldn't barely get four done. I don't think that necessarily speaks to the quality of our guild. But it certainly doesn't look good once you notice a slight power curve compared to the rest of the team. 
Had it not been for the incredible stretch of luck I had with my vault in a, a few weeks in a row, Sneaky Fox, Shelty Melter, and Felix could have easily overtaken me on the raid meters. The five of them became known within the guild as Better Than Only Fans, a Mythic Plus team. And they did not appreciate that they'd been given a nickname. <laughs> they didn't like it at all. We could barely make it through a raid night without someone badgering on about how few keys they've managed to do so far that week. And then asking Baldwin or Snowpants, Oh, how many keys have you done? I jokingly told one of our healers I couldn't give him Innovate because we don't have enough group synergy. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I can't innovate you, dude. Not enough group synergy, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's, just, pfft, it's not working, you know what I mean? But nevertheless, things did continue as usual. One of the more vocal opponents of the Better Than Only fans was Adri, a Shadow Priest and my only real non-Moonkin competition in the raid. Adri, like myself, is gay, which means he has zero patience for bullshit. And when Adri pressed M plus, uh, it, uh, when Adri pressed the Better Than Only fans team for answers, my God, did the bullshit shit. It was almost like asking your partner why he's breaking up with you and being told, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Which always, always means it's you. According to Bald One, here we go, here's the reasoning. According to Bald One, it's not that everyone is bad and them five are better. It just so happens that they're all online at the same time. That's the only reason. What a coincidence! Also, it that it's look, it's not you. It's just that it's easier to run keys with the same people. <laughs> they know the route. Right? I mean you understand where I'm coming from. There's two things at work here. One, we're online at the same time. And two we do so many keys, just us, that it's easier. So, I mean, <laughs> there it is. So what are you going to do? <laughs> My question, though. How would we know your roots if you don't run M plus with any of us? Now, the answer to this was a real cherry on the cake. She said, look, it's quite easy to get into a pug. So you shouldn't be so dramatic. There you go. I hope that solves your issue. Fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than the raid tank explaining to you how easy it is to get in a pug. Ah, oh, crisp. <laughs> Absolutely crisp. <coughs> yeah, a 226 Vengeance Demon Hunter. <laughs> it says here, okay, I might have been a little bit more receptive uh, to this reply if A, she wasn't a 226 Vengeance Demon Hunter who had now hit 1800 IO, who could even have any fucking understanding of LFG. <laughs> <laughs> and B, she wasn't privileged enough to have uh, never pugged anything in World of Warcraft, as far as I know. And C, she hadn't had these characters personally boosted by people such as my fucking self so that she wouldn't have to pug in the first place. Like I said before, her being a tank puts her in a difficult position within the guild. We get that. But beyond our bubble, she has an absurd advantage over the rest of us who play DPS specs. Can I just pause here? I don't know where this is going. I don't know where the big drama... I assume this is the beginning of the drama. But how in the fuck is your other tank getting away with this? And she's getting all the shit. I'm not saying she's innocent. I'm not saying that. But how in the titty fucking Christ is this other tank just like absolved? Right? Who doesn't do anything with anyone in the guild? She's at least, although she's in a group, right? She's at least five times better than the other guy, right? <laughs> well, this guy's just like, nah, I don't play with the guild. And everyone's like, oh, okay. But she does. 
bitch. <laughs> it's not playing with me now. What the hell? Like, going at her. What, what's going on? This other guy's like, nah, I don't do anything with the guild. And, <laughs> okay, okay. Fine. That, that's acceptable. Acceptable. <laughs> okay, let's go. I think you're in... I've, I'm suspecting a nice guy moment here because you, you helped to gear the tank. I could be wrong, but I'm sensing it. Okay. I never expected anything from her. Or from others, for that matter. But I thought their reasoning was borderline closer. As a consequence, one of our raiders left the guild because in the wake of their explanation... In the wake of this night where this explanation took place, Better Than OnlyFans made their own special Mythic Plus team page on Raider.io. <laughs> Aptly named Better Than OnlyFans. In a parting message, that raider who quit told Adri that the bald one is the single most toxic, toxic person in the guild and the murder she gets away with is ridiculous. This other tank is fucking clowning. <laughs> He's clowning hard. These were cutting words from someone from somebody whose company I fucking dread. But nonetheless, he captured the essence of what we were all feeling. He did end up rejoining after Sneaky Fox spoke to him though. I've been pretty vocal about my frustrations, but I grew tired of being angry, and I actually messaged the bald one on Discord to apologize. God, God, God damn it, dude. Ugh. Since then, because I apologized, I got invited to a few keys from time to time, and I even started learning some of the bald one's Mythic Plus roots. Oh my god, you sound like a puppy who got a treat. <sighs> Dude, you're making me sad. But after feeling down on myself for some time over this, I started to play less and less until I became a raid logger in recent weeks. Our raid was actually doing extremely well. Our team was mint. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had made it to Zymox before I took a vacation and missed the kill. I don't know how to explain it, but when I came back, something just didn't feel right with the fire slugs. It's like all the infighting had dissipated, but no one was happy. And nothing had changed. We were 15% away from killing council last week. So I was eager to see the boss fall when I logged in ahead of Wednesday's raid. I did a key with the bald one and sneaky fox playing my frost DK for a while. Then logged off so I could enjoy go and enjoy getting high. <laughs> when I logged back on later that night, the bald one, snow pants and shell to melter had all left the guild. According to sneaky fox, bald one and snow pants were burnt out and wanted to quit the game. Shelter left to follow them wherever they were going, since they were the only people he liked in the guild. Ironically, though, Snowpants, the bald one, and Sneaky Fox all, held it, all hated Shelter, and the only reason they ran keys with him is because he had time warp, <laughs> and he fit the meta. <laughs> Felix said he was just done with raiding, but left the guild a day later. With four essential and extraordinary players gone from our roster, we landed back in the same position we were in in Nihilotha. Only this time, we were screwed on council. Objectively, one of the worst bosses to progress in the entire raid. You've got a ways to go yet. Uh, we tried to fill our missing spots with trials and bench folk. <laughs> bench folk? I love that phrase. <laughs> oh god, it's the bench folk. <laughs> Be gone. Look down on them there, the bench folk. <laughs> I love that phrase. So we could re-clear. But after three hours, we had only managed to clear the first four out of our usual six. The bench folk. That, coupled with the snowstorm that hit the south this week, forced us to cancel raid. It's a sad position to be in, especially considering how happy I've been in this guild this expansion. It's hard to see people you thought you liked become immodest simps, but in the end, there's not much you can do. I hope, I hope to pray, that we're all able to recruit some solid players over the next few weeks and finish up the tier sooner rather than later. But I'm keeping my expectations low. I've thought about quitting the game until 9.0.5 comes out, but there's a clear incentive to run... Uh, when there will be a clear incentive to run Mupla. But that's the point of all that work before 9.1 comes and most of my gear is uh, 226 already. Same. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> my character is done. I'm not sure yet, but I hope you enjoy this little story. If there's enough interest, I have some pretty crazy stories from casual BFA guilds I could share. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful time. I want to know... Thank you for your story, but I really want to know how in the t how in the fuck this other tank flew under the radar. I I'm serious. I need to know how there was just no nothing towards this other guy 
who just was like, yeah, I don't do that. And that's it. And why couldn't you tank as a druid? I'm just, I don't get it. And you had a death knight as well? Other guy was bench folk? I don't think so. He just didn't run in plus with the guild, and therefore he gets to just not do it. And that's it. This is how tanks are everywhere now. Keggers and Regan weren't like that. I miss Keggers and I miss Regan. I miss the boys. I miss our tank bros. I mean, whatever. He's probably too far gone. It's too late for him now. It's too late for him. Either way, that brings the other drama for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hell of a ride from FF14 RP to 13 year olds. Good God. A hell of a journey. A hell of a journey. There was another story in here that we didn't get to read this week, so we can probably put it into the next one, which had an intriguing title, which was... Can't find it. Can't find it. This is a massive collection of stuff we did. Uh, the Tyranny of Niceness. I'm kind of intrigued in that one. The Tyranny of Niceness. It is tyrannical. It's tyrannical week next week. The Tyranny of Niceness. Have a wonderful little weekend, my friends. Maybe I'll be around. Uh, it's probably not. We have a lot of YouTube stuff to do. Uh, but if I can be, I will be, because Dragon Age, uh, yeah, Dragon Age is huge, and we want to push on a little bit, all right? But be awesome. Wherever you're going, have a great weekend. Do the best you can. I'll be back on Monday uh, live to see you. Other than that, have a good time. Bye, everybody. Divinity, that's the one. You know the one. Bye-bye. <laughs>